Welcome back guys, Captain Foley has returned for yet another Ego Moss review. Uh, today's one comes from the series Picard, Season 1, and one of the cooler ships that I think we see in Season 1 of Picard. Um, I am generally a fan of this one, and I uh, requested it, I wanted to get it for review to show you guys. It is a cool little design, and yeah, it's kind of like a ship we don't see very often in Star Trek, but it's a neat idea. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Tug, the Wallenberg class Tug from um, Eagle Moss and um, part of their Picard line obviously. So here we got the box, you see the, the Tug there, you see the name, uh, Picard, the official Starship collection, Hero Collector and then some of the other ships from Picard there. On the side those ships carry over and you see Picard. This side of the box again, you got the name and the ship which is great. This is a display piece on its own, as I always say with these boxes, because you can put them on a high shelf. Even if the ship is still in there, you can still display it. You can choose to display it that way or that way and still see the ship. It's got nice artwork. Um, so definitely good that way. Uh, this side just has Picard and the name of the ship. I like, like that they put the name of the ship on all the sides of these boxes, just because if it is on a display shelf, other Eagle Moss ships, other XLs, I have downstairs in a, in a closet in the boxes and they don't have the name on the side so I did get like a sticker to write the name on so I can just easily see at a glance but these I like that they include it because it just makes it more convenient for people so but anyway yeah the Wallenberg class tug we're gonna get into that right now and maybe I'll tug on your Star Trek review strings it wouldn't really be hard strings so but yeah let's let's get into it I don't know how many how many jokes I can make, how many puns I can do with the word tug that aren't too dirty. Anyway, so I opened it up, you got the book. Again, a beautiful shot of the ship on the front of the book there. So, um, and Wallenberg class tug down below. And over here you got some specs for it, which say type, tug, location, Mars, length, 298.7 meters. So, let's crack into the book and see what's in there. Alright, so open it up. Again, how to place it on the stand, as Ego Moss always does. Here you got the name of the class, Wallenberg Class Tug, and a shot of it from the side here. Which, I gotta say, from the side, this looks very much like a ship from Discovery, Battle, Battle of the Binary Stars. Looks like a ship quite on par as far as design and time period as like say the Shenzhou, Shenzhou class so I mean there is that but moving down here we got specifications again some different ones type tug affiliation federation assigned to Uto Utopia Planitia Mars length 298.7 meters and on the bottom of course some detailed shots of or close-ups of the tug of the model Alright, open up Wallenberg class tug. And some nice shots of the ship there. Three beautiful shots. Looks really good. And it says here, the Federation used these vehicles to haul vast trains of cargo into orbit around the Utopia Planitia fleet yards. This is a neat design, I gotta say. Um, Although it does look very Discovery. I'm not saying that Discovery designs are awful, because they're not. Um, it just It's a certain desi design aesthetic that I'm not super happy with a lot of the time. But anyway, there we got the Orthos. I love fu full Orthos of ships. So there you've got it in all of its beautiful glory. Um, so yeah, looks really, really, really good. Um, and I, I keep saying, Eagle Moss needs to make these available as posters, all of these Orthos. I would buy posters of Orthos of ships. So, next page is designing the cargo tug. Um, the Federation cargo tugs in orbit around Mars went through some major changes and some had some hidden features. So, that's actually a different design for a tug, but uh, you can see that there. Um, 
and it goes through a bunch of different design iterations. So there's this first one here that looks more utilitarian and well there's two of them there I, I prefer the one on the left actually uh, but the other one looks very you know utilitarian something out of armada the game star trek armada actually down below we got this design which again is another cool design more like a horseshoe look and uh it makes sense actually uh that picture of it as a train with the uh, the horseshoe docking into these modules um looks really great actually um, then we got this following one, the Hercules or Samson class tug, which is similar to the Wallenberg class, but different design. Looks more Starship-like. So, uh, but again, you can see where the uh, pods attach on, and you got the train down here, both attached and disconnected. Very reminiscent of Franz Joseph's Ptolemy class tug from the technical manual. Uh, next page, we got the Crosby Street um, design, which looks a lot like this one, like the Wallenberg class final version. Um, and down below, there's another iteration of it as well, as they're kind of dialing in the design. On this page, we got this shot here, which is that first shot on the, the first uh, two pages. It says, on this... The first model that the 3D team produced, the nacelles were too close to the body, so Eves took, took one of their renders and modified it to show the correct position of the nacelles. He also painted the ship with a dark orange to suggest that it was used for industrial work. So a lot of people have kind of made the complaints, or the, not really, the, the, the observation that it's a weird paint scheme, but I like it because it is so vibrant and so like out of the box for Starfleet that yes, it makes sense to be a utilitarian ship, that's why it's painted that way. Um, down here we've got some more details as well. Um, and I love Johnny's design sketches. This says, The 3D modelers who were working on the ship in the art department were new to Star Trek and didn't know about all the different technologies you'd expect to see in the surface of a ship. So Eves took their renders and painted over them to add the details. So that's actually sad in and of itself to hear that the people working on the ships weren't even Star Trek fans, didn't know what a Star Trek ship needed to be a Star Trek ship. That is a real problem for me. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. Anyway, they fixed it. Johnny's drew in the necessary details. So, And on this last page, we've got, well, that's the next one, the Romulan flagship, which I do have. I will review at some point. But over here, we got this... Um, sketch or diagram or and it says in the scene that was originally described to Eves the ships evacuating Mars would have shown around a massive space station which he also designed in the end the sequence was completely reimagined and the space station was no longer required so it would have been cool to see another space station around Utopia Planitia if you missed these ships in the show I don't blame you it was in one of the first episodes it was a quick pan over you saw a few of them doing their thing um, but it wasn't really focused on too heavily, and it's a shame because it's a cool-looking ship. But on the back of the book, you've got the ship from the back there, and you can see what a docking pod would see as it's backing up. Beep, 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 beep. Sorry. So that's the book. Let's get into the actual ship itself now. So here it is. Again, I like the color scheme. It feels very reminiscent of like um, Star Trek Online with the dark blacks and grays, uh, and even the silvers. But you can see there, it's it's quite a nice looking design. Um, so I go from the bottom. It's got some cool stuff on it. But pretty big. Again, about the size of my head. And uh, yeah, this feels like a. This almost feels like a. Nemesis era version of like the something like the Sydney class, which was the USS Genolan in Relics. Um, it just feels like that kind of vibe. It also feels like it could be a fighter or a shuttle, just with that look, or even turning it upside down, like some kind of. But I like the I like the Wallenberg class. It's cool. Anyway, let's get into looking at it in more detail. So we look at the front, and you got the orange paint with looks like red. I don't know if those are tractor emitters because it wouldn't be a phaser strip, but um, 
would make sense to be multiple tractor emitters. So that's there. It's got some chipping on the orange paint, which actually looks really good. It looks like utilitarian ship. Uh, moving to the front, you've got some just greebly details. Um, going back up to the top again, though, you got the silver and the different different tones of silver to indicate plating, which looks really good. It, as you move it in the light, it gleans and it changes. It looks very much like the uh, pearlescent Aztecing that's on the uh, refit Enterprise. Uh, moving back, you got the bridge module, which looks like it has a yellow light or ring around the front. Probably a window, unfortunately. But uh, moving back from that, um, you got the, well, first of all, you got this dark stripe um, all on the top, which looks really cool. This part here is again looks very Shenzhou-y, looks very much like the back of the Shenzhou, and that's one of the design cues that makes me definitely think Shenzhou when I look at this. Um, on the here, you've got impulse en style engines, much like the uh, Sovereign um, style. Uh, so, flipping it over though, uh, that forward detail bleeds into those which you know look like very industrial, industrial industrious <laughs> whatever anyway back here there is a module a rectangular module with two barrel like attachments on it which are painted orange and black it looks like almost like they're strapped on there they actually look like like um metal drums of some kind like you would see like oil in <laughs> so i don't know what those are necessarily but it's a nice feature it looks like i said it looks very in industrial it looks like something that's Again, I don't know what they would be necessarily. So, eh. uh, but the the black around it on the sides has some uh, detailing, and it's again it's modeled with a little bit of gray as well to look like weathered, and that carries on to the back there. Uh, now, if you go here, there is like a window there, which I guess would be fine as a window for maybe that's the bridge at the bottom. Um, but that carries all the way back and on the bottom it just has that um, silver and gray um, hull plating texture again uh, so that's kind of neat uh, from the side that actually looks really cool that looks looks neat I don't know what the purpose would be necessarily but it looks cool um, on the bottom of the nacelles you've got the silver on the front orange at the back and some, also some yellow kind of striping. Which, that carries to the top of the nacelle. The top of the nacelles are exactly the same detailing. Uh, so, the very back has some silver greebly work in there. And then if you go down to the bottom here, it says Tug uh, 130-27. So they all have their own unique registry numbers for tugs, which is cool. Um, and even in that kind of coloring and stuff um, is great. Now, <laughs> it's cool that it's on the back here because that's one of the reasons that the Cerritos doesn't have a registry number on the front. When we, when we spoke with Mike McMahon for our interview, he said the reason it's got it at the back, kind of like a tramp stamp, is because it's not an important ship. So it's one that comes in and t pulls other ships out of a battle. Like it's, you know, so you see the back of the ship generally from another ship. So that's actually kind of neat for a tug. So. Take that for what you will, but uh, yeah, we've done some interviews with Mike McMahon, so check those out. Uh, then we got the nacelles, probably not necessarily high high speed warp nacelles, probably low warp, maybe warp to warp four or five, probably from taking stuff from Earth to Mars, so not really um, the regular standard design. But at the front, you got some black detail, again with some gray and silver speckled on there, and then moving back. They kind of look like alien type nacelles in a way. They've got the these orange details, these orange raised hull plating details, and then a uh, light blue um, paint on them. Which generally Eagle Moss will do like a see-through clear blue plastic for the nacelles. Uh, they didn't opt to do so in this case, um, so not necessarily not necessarily sure why, but looks good. I mean, from the top, the nacelles look really neat. From the side, they actually look really good. Um, and if you go to the bottom of the nacelles, you've got orange there, and then again the black with the silver 
weathering and just like hull detailing, which again is kind of cool. So not really much to talk about with this design, but it is very cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing it on the stand as you guys better be in your own home. Go click that affiliate link down below. There's an affiliate link to Eagle Moss. Click that so they know where the traffic is coming from and use the discount code TREKYARDS10 to save yourself 10% on orders of $50 or more should you want to pick some stuff up. And trust me, filling your cart with $50 or more from Eagle Moss is not difficult. So let's tug on over to the um, turntable and take a look at it on there and finish up this review for you guys. So come on guys, let's go. All right, here she is on the stand, and the stand slotted in quite well. It's actually kind of a unique slotment or um, placement for Eagle Moss. They actually slide right onto the struts, so that was pretty cool. Um, but here you see it in detail. Quite an upward arc on that stand, which I'm not a huge fan of generally for most designs. Uh, this one, I could take it or leave it, um, but. Yeah, so there you see it. This is one that from the top looks like a sleek kind of starship or shuttle or something really cool. Besides the fact that it says tug on the back. So if you put it on a lower shelf, you get some really good views of it. Some nice shapes there incorporated in there. Um, if you put it on an eye level shelf, again, you know, if it's have it angled away from you, it looks really good. You can really read that tug there. Um, and as it comes around to the front, um, We'll see how it looks that way with the angled up stand, which actually is kind of good in this case. I mean, even there it looks really good. You got a lot of a lot of things going on with those tanks and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, on an eye level shelf, kind of looks okay from there. If you put it on an upper shelf with all that detail on the bottom, this thing really pops. Especially if you point it forward like that, it looks really good. Lots to see um, on an upper shelf, so. I'd recommend it for an upper shelf, actually. Um, but it doesn't really necessarily matter. You could do it anyway, um, either way you'd like. But, yeah. So, there it is. The Wallenberg Class Tug from Picard. Guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the affiliate link to get yourself some Eagle Moss stuff with the discount code. And subscribe to both channels, the Captain Foley Personal Channel and the Trek Yards Channel. And don't forget to check out other videos and reviews by us as well. And we'll see you guys later. Until then, I'm Captain Foley, signing off. Bye, guys.